know how many of you were here yesterday, but you can probably see I made mistakes in the one tempi changes. So I'm just going to start from the basics and just get the change one out. So I'm going to use the wall. So at home, I never train, train the changes on the diagonal. I literally stick to the wall. So this horse, you will see, he has changes that swing from side to side. So basically, rather than pushing forward for the change, he pushes to the side. So by using the wall, so I put him on his side that he's the worst at swinging, the wall does the work for me. So. I'm just going to ask him to put the change on the outside. Good. Nice. And then I'm going to bring him back, make him wait on the hind leg. And then I'm going to ride him forward. I'm going to make him push for the change. And nice. you can see I still slightly come off the wall. So I've got to really hold his shoulders on the wall. He mustn't come off the wall because then he cheats. Put him one out. Super. Bring him back. Make him wait. Ride him forward. So that yeah, I nice. do the flying change. Oh, I do the flying change, but then I can bring him back also. So I make another transition. And then I ride him forward again. And then I bring him back again. Oh. Then I ride him forward. Right now I try some fours. So in between the change, whoop, so actually I might go on the other side because today I feel like he's swinging more from the left, from the right to the left. So I'll actually change the rein and I'll put him on the other side. So in between each of the change, I still have to make a half hole. So what I ideally want to do is make the change bigger than the canter stride. So it's not just about doing a flying change, it's about the quality of the flying change. So everybody can do a flying change, but what makes you get a 10 for your flying changes? Well, it's the height and it's the quality of the canter in between and the rhythm of the change. So down the next long side, I will try my threes. So if you watch the height this horse gets in the flying change. Oh, missed. So that's quite common because, doesn't matter, because he wants to swing, but he can't because the wall's there, so which is why he didn't go off my first day. But it doesn't matter. You don't tell him off. You just keep going. That's right. Because the more you tell him off, the more you make an issue, the horse becomes tense, then the, the changes never come. That was super. So now the horse has to push forward for each change rather than what he wants to do is swing from side to side. So I would always train this horse on the wall. So I'll try the twos. So in between, half hole, half hole, half hole, half hole, half hole. Half hole. Awesome. So Great you do job. That. And as Charlotte said, the hardest thing is the ones. So riding someone else's horse, even if they've done the ones many, many times, but keying into how the other rider does the ones is the hardest thing. So she just did one and back very easily, very easily again. Super. So how do you get them to do the ones? So as you just saw there, I'm going to bring it right back to the basics. So you first of all, after you've got your fours and your threes and your twos, you've then got to use, be very quick with your legs. What you mustn't do is wait for the horse, which is the hardest thing to do. So I have to be very quick with my leg. So I ask before the change happens. Oh. 
good. Yeah. So you can just see, I do two, one stride, two, one stride, two, one stride. So I start like that, and now I want to try four. So I start with two, now I'll add a few more. Good. Super. And then I'll go again. Super. Good. And there so was there six. six. So each time, I just want to try and build it. I want to add a few more so that I stay in control of all the changes. You will see, so there he just loses the canter, so I will make a circle, get the canter again, make it quicker, good. Yeah, nice. So I'll try a few more. So even when he makes a mistake, I have to then pick it up again right. so that he doesn't learn to make a mistake and then he stops. So if he makes a mistake, I've got to be very quick to get back in sync and pick it up. So. And again, you can see he wants to swing. Good. Yeah, super. Oh the contact got stronger as he star started to do them better with less mistakes. If the contact gets weak suddenly, then it's very hard because there's nothing to make that next half halt with. So as he became more full in the reins right here, he was between seat leg and rein better, and of course then she made no mistakes after that. And so that's the deal, is making sure that the connection between seat leg and rein, as you come up to those ones, is such that the horse is truly connected, and then you can ride really sweet half halts the way Charlotte just did there and get all those ones. That was super. The difficult part is, is not letting them get faster, because you will find when you ride the, the ones, they want to speed up yeah. in them. And especially a horse like him, he gets a little bit quicker, more away from me, so I have to really try and sit down and keep him back with my upper body, but then keep my legs moving in the way that he knows the aid for the change, but not faster.